On today's episode of being stuck in the middle of nowhere 600 miles from home, we have our new boat, the Sea Nymph CC171. On the side of the I-5 interstate, with not one shredded tire, but two. As you can see up in there. So, I am currently abandoning the trailer with my number on it. I'll have to blur that out. And I'm gonna go head into some farm town, try to find some jacks. Mom, don't watch this video, you're not gonna like it. Okay, got some water and some Gatorade for my helpers who are hopefully coming and myself, because it's gonna be like 90 degrees later. Filled up, I'm gonna go buy some jack stands and a jack and start the process at least if I can't finish it myself and bring them the wheel. I was about to go into the Napa Auto Parts and I just saw the Les Schwab guy in his truck drive by and they said it was gonna take a couple hours, but I called them and I think it's the same guy. So now I'm going back to the boat and I'm trying to catch up with him. Okay, this is so stressful. Like I try not to get stressed about things. Don't see the guy, but I'm obviously gonna have to go pretty far to be able to turn around. There's my boat over there, just sitting on the side of the freeway. What is happening? There he is, that's him right there. Thank Jesus. Okay, hopefully his tires fit. Got the hazard lights on. It's a good thing the tow truck already showed up. Oh my goodness. Also, I wore a yellow shirt today because I had a feeling that I might end up on the side of the road. I'm not gonna lie. Two new tires. It's like $500, but I would have been very, very screwed without that guy. So I appreciate him more than he'll ever know it. We still got six hours to drive home and this was not how the video was supposed to start. So let's cut to something else. The good news is look at that sunset. If I didn't lose both wheels on my trailer, I would have missed that. And that is beautiful. It's always a little bit of a silver lining. Ended up being like a three hour delay. So now I'm driving in the dark, which I didn't want to do. But the trailer lights are working, which I am very surprised. It looks like they work perfectly. So hopefully I make it. I got like another hour here and then I should be home. And we'll see you tomorrow on going over this thing and figuring out what else is wrong with it. Till then, goodbye. There she is, the Sea Nymph CC171. Made it back alive last night, luckily. And today I just wanna kinda go through it, try to figure out what I bought. Start to get it cleaned up, figure out what we wanna do with the floor. Um, probably wanna get a compass and maybe a radio. Lots of wiring to figure out. I'm pretty sure the bilge pump has to be rewired up. And then I'm gonna kinda just clean up the back here. And then I'm gonna take this to go get serviced. So I'll know it is all ready and good to hit the ocean. So I don't have to call the Coast Guard too many times. Yesterday, I think what I ended up having was, I think this fender also was cutting into our tire, which caused it to blow out. Super sketchy. I didn't really explain it very well, but basically what happened was I couldn't call Triple A I wasn't covered and it wouldn't fit on a flatbed. And I was like 80 miles from any major town and all the tow companies were like an hour away. So I was really screwed, but luckily that farm guy was able to come out and help me out. And they had two of these in stock. So crisis averted on that. So let's go ahead and make a list of things I want to do. I'm sure there'll be way more than all this, but let's start with cleaning the boat. like that I'd say the boat is pretty clean 
I tried to get it better back in here, but it's just super caked on there. It's kind of like a tar, oily, dirt messiness. So did my best, but at least got all the leaves out so the village pump won't get clogged up. So today I'm gonna work on the electrical. We have to run electrical up to the lights up there, to the light back here, and then bilge pump. And I'm gonna be putting in conduit since we are gonna screw the floor down and it's gonna be hard to take it back up. So that way someone else in the future could rerun more wires or change those wires out. First thing I'm gonna do before I start wiring that was move this bilge pump back because you can see there's water back there and there's none up here. And I want it to be able to be at the lowest point so we can get all the water out to its best of its ability. So we're gonna have to cut these screws off because they're all stripped and screw it back in back there. That was surprisingly easy. So that's all good to go. I'm gonna start putting in this conduit and pulling the wire through it. In order to fish the wire through the conduits, I'm gonna use this string and then just blow it through to the other side. I was really struggling to try to get these to pull through. There's just a lot of resistance for some reason. And I put some WD-40 in the pipe and it helped it kinda, you know, it's still not easy, but it comes through a lot better, so. There we go. Feels good. Took way too long trying to run the wire through the conduits took forever like three hours it was horrible but i finally figured out a good way to do it by blowing the string through and then using that to fish it through with the wd-40 so moment of truth see if they work yay got our red and green up there and our white light in the back and the bilge pump It's going. I'm actually pretty happy with how it all turned out yesterday. It took way longer than I wanted to, but today we are gonna finish the floor, hopefully get it all screwed down for real this time. So I was kind of like planning on originally just using those and kind of tracing them out, but they just weren't like super precise. They look like they're just kind of eyeballed. So I'm just gonna start by cutting the pieces square and then trying to figure out kind of how much you need to cut it as the boat kind of concaves inward a little bit. The back piece does fit in square, which made it a little easier, but I had a route out where it goes underneath that box there and that little vertical support there. Cause I think originally this boat had half inch plywood. So it just would not fit underneath those things. You can see I really messed up there. I'll try to fix that later. Hopefully with some Bondo or something. But this next piece I thought would be easier, but we run into the challenge of where these braces come up above the height of the flat part. So either like it would not sit flat across the whole way or I have to cut out around that. And I want to have as wide of a floor as possible without those sticking through. So what I think I'm going to do, and I don't know if this is the right thing, I'm going to do some furring strips just to bring the floor up a little bit to where it will be at this height.
finally the floor is complete for now the white honestly at the very end kind of messed it up because it kind of brought out some of the grain in the wood for some reason there you can like see all the little cracks where i guess it sucked with the paint which is kind of a bummer but i do have plans to make this floor nicer in the future but what we ended up with was three quarter inch plywood and then a garage floor two-part epoxy over it and then over that i did some of this one part polyurethane topside paint which is marine grade and you can see i'm already kind of scuffing it up because it's not completely cured yet but that's okay okay i'm going to be going over it one more time in a future video but i want to go ahead and get all of this stuff mounted up and secured Fixed floor is complete for now. Get motor serviced, done. Screw down floor, done. So only last two things are fixed topper and everything. And we'll call this the radio. I'm gonna get that installed and then we're ready to take this thing out. One thing I really don't like about the way this switch is set up is all the positive wires, how it came from the factory, they're all daisy chained together. So every single thing you have on here is sharing one power source off the fuse block. That's just like a poor way to do it because obviously you want one power source, each one fused going in so they're not all sharing one wire going into the switch panel. So I think I will eventually, probably the next video, cut each one of these daisy chain things and run everything its own wire off the fuse block. Radio is installed. Last thing I need to do is put on the cover. Going in the water. Look, it's running. Nope. The mighty sea nymph made it out to sea and uh, didn't make it much further past that. Once we started giving it some gas, engine died, tried a bunch of things, tried throttling up a little bit. Don't know where the choke is on it, so that could have been an issue, but fuel air and gas all seemed good so it's going straight back to the mechanic works fine now so i think what happened dash i kind of know what happened was i had the trim wrong so the bow went way too high and then our little gas tank slipped and we ended up getting a nice air pocket. I also didn't have this clamped on, so I think we were sucking a little bit of air, but I think it was a fuel issue. So, gonna have to test again, but that's about all there is for this video. Next video, I wanna finish the floor and make it nicer. And I got some other stuff to install and then we'll go test this thing again. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.